you've been thinking of buying yourself a used DJI drone, either because you can't actually get a new one in the US right now, or you want to grab yourself a bargain because someone has upgraded, you now need to be a little bit careful. In the past, DJI have been happy to unlock used DJI drones from the original account holder's DJI account. However, today, DJI have now stated that they are not going to do this, and as a result of that, before you buy any used DJI drone, regardless of if it's from a personal user or a retailer, you need to make sure that the drone is not bound to the user's account, because if it is, you may not be able to get full use of it in the future. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is explain exactly what the situation is, how this has changed compared to the past, but also show you exactly what you need to do to be able to check the drone and even unlock it with the original user before handing over your money. Now, before I explain exactly what is changing, I just want to be clear in saying that this only affects off-the-shelf drones from DJI. It does not affect the DJI 03 or 04 ear units. It is only related to their off-the-shelf drones like the Mavic series, the Mini series, the Air series, or the Avata or Neo. It does not affect ear units in any way because those products don't have the key refresh and flyaway protection that requires this change that DJI is making. Some years ago, DJI introduced their key refresh plan. It's a bit like an insurance that you pay a fee up front to have protection for accidental damage on your DJI drone. The way it works is, if you were to fly your lovely new drone into a tree and damage it, you can send it off to DJI, and for a much lower fee than the new replacement cost, you could get a replacement drone. Now, there are a lot of conditions around key refresh that I'm not going to get into today, but the very basics were that you pay a small fee up front to have the option to be able to claim for a low cost replacement in the future. The one thing to understand about DJI Care Refresh, though, is that it does require your original drone to be returned for either repair or replacement, and it isn't a complete insurance in the event of a total loss. As a result of that, DJI later on bolted on what they call their flyaway protection on the Care Refresh package. Flyaway protection was specifically added to allow people to claim in the event of their drone just randomly taking off into the sunset. Flyaway protection is not a coverage for you doing something silly. So, for instance, flying over a lake, hitting a building on the edge and dropping it into the lake. Flyaway protection is specifically in the event of an issue with the aircraft where it took off completely outside of your control. To be able to qualify for this new flyaway protection, though, you are required to perform a bonding process. Now, this process does a number of things. It links the drone and the remote controller to your DJI account. It provides DJI with their serial numbers so they know what product they're covering. It also links the drone and the remote controller together, restricting the drone from being able to be used with other remote controllers. Whilst you technically still can use this with another remote, it will limit you up to five times, and then it will only work again with the original DJI remote that it was bound to. You could still use this drone with another remote controller, but you would have to unbind them before doing that to allow it to be able to work on a permanent basis. The third thing about this is that it offers DJI fraud protection, because there will be people who try to claim on this flyaway protection when their drone hasn't actually flown away. They might be able to provide enough evidence to DJI to get a replacement, and then think that they can just sell the original one or the replacement on the open market. Bonding, though, tries to stop that happening because that original drone is bonded to the original remote controller. The new drone is also bonded to the original remote controller as well. And basically, the only way that you could sell this drone is with the original remote controller, which would then mean you can't use the new one. The very basics are this bonding tries to prevent fraud and links all parts of the system together so DJI can ensure they know the serial numbers, but also stop people doing things that they shouldn't do. 
Now, for camera drone users, a drone being bound to someone else's account doesn't actually affect you in many ways. You can still fly the drone all the time as normal. It won't restrict you from flying. It won't give you any limitations on height, image quality, or anything like that. Where it will affect you is if you, A, wanted to buy your own DJI K refresh, because if the drone was still linked to the previous owner's account, you can't then link it to your own account and then order K refresh. You couldn't make a claim on K refresh when it is linked to someone else's account. And thirdly, you wouldn't be able to change the remote controller that it works with. So for instance, if you bought the drone with something like the RCN2 or RCN3, but wanted to upgrade it to the DJI RC or the RC2, because it's bound to the original remote controller and the original owner's account, you wouldn't then be able to unbound it and link it to the new remote controller. You'd be able to use it five times, but that would be it. Something else to be very weary of around this is people only selling the drones themselves and not selling the drone with its remote controller. As I've said, this bonding process links the drone to the remote. And if you don't have that remote and it's bonded, you will not be able to bond it to a different remote. We've often seen people selling just drones on their own, and these have sometimes turned out not to be legitimate. For instance, they are drones that they've either found as a result of it landing in a random place and someone picking it up and walking off with it, or people who have made a claim on their key refresh fly away saying that it has flown away and then getting their replacement. The reality is, if you're buying a DJI drone with its remote controller, the restrictions around this are more around your ability to buy key refresh or you choose a different remote. But if you were to buy a standalone drone without a remote controller that was bound, you would not be able to link it to any other remote controller without the original account holder's permission. For FPV users though, things get a little bit more complicated because in this bonding process, there's also a bond to FPV goggles, whereas on the drones with the remotes, it bonds to the remote. On the likes of the Vata 2 that bonds to goggles, it would restrict the goggles that you would be able to use the drone with as well. It is far more likely for someone to be affected by this on an FPV product than it is, say, a camera drone product in the sense of if you were to buy an Avata 2 with its remote controller but without the goggles and it was bound to that original user's account, you wouldn't then be able to link it to your goggles because your goggles are not the goggles it's bound to. So this is why it's really important to understand what the bonding is all about and how it affects you. Now, the big change in all of this is the fact that DJI are no longer going to offer the unbinding process for people who are not the original account holder. In the past, DJI have actually unbound drones from accounts when people have bought it used as long as they've provided enough evidence. So for instance, you might have provided a used purchased invoice, proof of purchase, and in those situations, DJI would have offered the unbinding to allow you to use it with your own remote and account. However, they will not do this moving forward. And as a result of all of this, it is imperative that before you buy a used drone, you make sure that it is not bound to an account, or if it is bound to an account, you get it unbound by that original user before handing over money, because today, if you were to buy a DJI drone that was bound to someone else's account, the only person who can do the unbounding is the original owner. DJI will not touch it moving forward. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to check if a DJI drone is bound to a DJI account. We're going to do this today with this little Neo, but this applies to all of DJI's consumer drones. So it doesn't matter if it's a Neo, an Avata, an Avata 2, a DJI Flip, a Mini, an A or a Mavic. All of those models all have the same process and I will show you how to check that now. There is one other thing I just want to highlight is there is a slightly different check that you may need to make on the likes of the Neo or the Avata 2 if you're using them with a set of DJI goggles, such as the Goggles 3 here or the N3. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. 
Now, obviously, when buying a used drone, you want to make sure it works properly. You should test fly it before giving over any money. And I would recommend when you do that, make sure you do it with their smart device, with their DJI account. The reason I'm saying this is you can only unbind a DJI drone from a DJI account from the account it's bonded to. You will not be able to unbind it from your own account. So if you test it with their account, it's a great way of then being able to check if it's actually linked to their account. It's also worth me highlighting that whilst I am showing you this here today on the DJI RCN3, this also applies to all of the other DJI remotes, even the ones with a built-in screen, such as the DJI RC or the RC2. Obviously, if you're buying a drone with that remote, you don't need to connect your smart device, but the overall process is exactly the same. You will need to be logged into their DJI account on that remote controller. You will also need to make sure that that remote controller is online. So it either has a connection to Wi-Fi or at least connection to a personal hotspot on yours or their personal devices. It doesn't really matter what remote it is. The important thing to understand is that you are logged in on whatever remote or smart device it is to their DJI account. Now to check if it's bound, what you need to do is power up the drone, the remote controller, and connect that to their smartphone and open up the DJI app. Once you've got the DJI Fly app open, it should show that it's connected, ready to connect to the drone. So for instance, if I click Go Fly, you can see there that it has the image on the screen. Now to check, if this drone is actually bonded to an account, what we need to do is on the home page here, click on profile. Now you can see that we're into their main profile of their DJI account. You should see their DJI account name here. If they're logged in, it will show it just like I'm showing you there. If here it shows login, like you can see there, this means that they're not actually logged into their DJI account. And you will need to then click on that and actually log into their DJI account to be able to check it before proceeding. Next, from here, we need to click on device management, and then it will show up a list of the drones that they've got bound or registered on their account. You can see here on this account, I've got my Avata 2 and the Neo. Today, we're looking at the Neo, so I'm going to click on that. Under this screen here, you should now be able to see if the drone has been bound to this account. You can see under account and devices, you can see it says bound to and my email address, and then it gives us the aircraft serial number as well as the flight controller serial number. This is telling us that this drone is bound to this account. And before buying it, you will need to make sure that you undo this to allow you to connect it to your own account. To do this unbinding, you can see here, remove device from account. You would simply click that and then click next. And it will then proceed to warn you and confirm if you want to remove the device from this account. Now, just something to note, on some drones, it might not show it under this area here and instead show it under the value added services option. This also shows you the current status of additional options like Care Refresh. You can see the replacement service on this is actually valid. And if someone is selling you a drone with Care Refresh, it will have that listed under there. And you wanna make sure that you do get an original purchase invoice from them as well to be able to prove that you own the drone should you need to claim. Once that's done, it is then no longer bound to that user's DJI account. And then you would be able to bind it to your own account when you choose to in the future. Now, if you're in the position where you don't have access to their DJI account or they say to you that they don't know what it is or they don't have a smartphone, again, before leaving with the drone, you should check this with your own DJI account. So this time I am logged in to this DJI Fly app with my other account. This account is the one that is not bound to this aircraft. If we do the same thing that we did before, we click on profile, we then go under device management. You can see here, this time it says that this drone is already bound to another account. It will give us a hint of what the account name or email address is, but it won't give us the full name or email. 
Whilst this shows us that it is bound to another account, what it will not do is let you unbind it. There is no way to unbind this drone from this account unless we have the original account holder's login details. Now, as I mentioned earlier, whilst this is for most of DJI's standard consumer drones, there is actually a slightly different process to do this check on the DJI Avata 2. The reason for this is the Avata 2 is not compatible with the more traditional DJI remotes. Instead, the Avata 2 uses either the DJI FPV remote or the DJI RC Motion. Neither of them are able to connect to a smart device and instead you would connect your smartphone to the goggles via a USB-C cable. To do this, I have a USB cable connected into the USB-C port on the bottom of the DJI Goggles 3, and then I've got that connected into my smartphone. Now, the process to check it is exactly the same. So first of all, we need to make sure that we are connected and we can see our homepage. Now to check this, it's exactly the same as before. We're gonna go into profile, we're gonna select device management, and this time, alongside the drone, you can see that the goggles are shown. This is just a view to be able to give you some information about the goggles. So you can see here info such as motion controller and the goggles serial number. However, what we're looking for is the drone itself, which is the Avata 2. And again, you can see that this drone is also bound to this account. So again, before purchasing this, you want to make sure that this is removed. So what this means in the end is that DJI will not help you if you have bought a drone used that is linked to someone else's account. It will not matter if you bought it from a person, a retailer. There are many places in the UK and America that sell used drones. You've got CX in the UK, even Amazon may sell used drones. However, DJI will not unbound it from an account if it is linked to someone else's. You will need to make sure before buying a used drone that this has been done, or if you're buying one blind from the likes of Amazon or others, you need to be in the position to be able to return it if it is bound, because it doesn't matter how much evidence you provide, DJI will not unbind an aircraft moving forward. This does make buying used aircraft a bit more of a challenge. And as I have said already, this doesn't mean that you wouldn't be able to use the aircraft at all, because if you did buy the aircraft with its original remote controller, even if it was bound to someone else's account, you would still be able to use it, but it will limit you on what you can do. So for instance, if you wanted to use the drone with a different remote controller or a set of FPV goggles, you will be limited. Or if you wanted to buy your own DJI Care Refresh, you wouldn't be able to. It is quite complicated on how this affects you because it doesn't necessarily stop you using the drone if it is shipped with its original remote controller, but you are buying a drone that is bound to someone else's account in a way that's limited and you won't necessarily be able to get the full functionality or at least capabilities and features that DJI may offer. We really do not know what else DJI is going to do around this in the future and it is even possible they could go as far as to restricting you to only use it on the original DJI account as well, which if you had a drone which was bound to someone else's would completely leave you in the lurch. The reality is with this, I would not under any circumstances buy a used DJI drone that is bound to someone else's account. If you find it is bound, get it unbound as quick as you can or give it back, send it back and get your money back. If you're buying one, I've shown you in this video what to check. If you've already got one that's bound to someone else's account, you're in a bit of a difficult position right now. What I would say is, give DJI a shout before they make this policy change and try and see if they'll unbind it. But once we're past the cutoff period, that is it, you are going to be on your own. So, that is it. Hopefully you have found this video useful. I hope it's given you the information you need to protect yourselves. If you have found this video useful and you'd like to support the channel, please do consider check out the links to my Patreon or buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to make content in the future, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Look after yourselves, be safe out there, be careful, 
be careful on what you're buying especially and i will speak to you soon